Okay, in this video, I'm going to try to demonstrate for you guys the different kinds of igneous rocks that we have in this tray here. Now, this is a smaller subset of the igneous rocks that we normally do for lab, but uh, since we're trying to do this online and through videos and photos, I thought it would make sense if we cut the number down to a smaller subset that's a little easier to tell apart on video and in photos. So we'll give this a shot here and see if we can explain these and see if this can help you learn some igneous rocks through the online lab. Okay, so I'm gonna go through these rocks one at a time and describe the properties that each one has and hopefully that will help you guys learn to identify some of them. We're gonna start with this one up here. This is first one has a very dark green color uh, it does also have some clear, visible crystals in it. If you look closely, you can see some very clear, sizable crystals in this one. This rock is called a peridotite. It is an ultramafic rock, so that's an important one. That's peridotite, dark green with visible crystals. The next one in the tray is a mafic rock. This is black and very fine grained. You can't see really any visible crystals in this specimen. And so uh, it looks like a homogeneous mass. So this particular rock is basalt. Basalt is a volcanic rock. It is very fine grained and you can't see visible crystals in it. Now, here's another sample of basalt. This one is a little different in that it's not quite as fine-grained. Most of it is fine-grained, but there are a few crystals in here of a green mineral, which hopefully you can see this on the video. And those green crystals, those are olivine crystals. And so when olivine forms in basalt, sometimes it can form crystals that are big enough to see, and those are called phenocrysts. This next rock sample, this is called andesite. Again, this is a volcanic rock. This one is a lot lighter gray color compared to the black basalt. It's also very fine grained, but again, there are some crystals in here that are visible to see. They do show up as phenocrysts. And this one has feldspar phenocrysts in it. The rest of it is a very fine-grained uh, gray material that's other crystals and minerals, but just very, very fine-grained so that you can't really see individual ones. Okay, the next rock in the sample is a well-known type of rock. This is granite. Now, granite is characterized by having coarse grains, large crystals that are easy enough to see with the naked eye. And if you look closely at this one, you can no doubt see crystals of biotite and quartz and plagioclase and potassium feldspar. All granites have those latter three minerals, quartz and the feldspars, in them. And all granites have uh, crystals that are big enough to see. Now here's another sample of granite. Uh, this one's a little bit different in color, but it's not really all that different in terms of the minerals and the texture. The minerals are still quartz and the feldspars and biotite and mica is also in there as well. And so the minerals are still really the same. It's a very coarse grained rock. You can clearly see crystals in it. And those crystals consist of quartz, feldspars, and sometimes things like biotite or muscovite or amphibole. Here is a third specimen of granite. This one again is a little bit different looking, uh, but the color, if you recall from minerals, color is not a great indicator of 
minerals and it's not terribly great for rocks either. So this sample of granite again has quartz, it has feldspars, and it, this one also has biotite, black crystals in there. Has a little bit different grain size, a little bit coarser grains than some of the others. And the grains are also slightly different colors. But again, you've got some kind of pinkish colors, some gray colors, some white colors, and the black of the biotite. All three of those are pieces of granite. A granite, again, has quartz and feldspars, and they are coarse grained. It has that coarse grained, large texture where you can easily see individual grains. All right, our fifth sample here, this is a variety of granite. This is called a pegmatite. Now, a pegmatite is a type of granite it is, however, really, really large and coarse grained. The crystals here are really big. And in fact, as pegmatites go, this one really doesn't have all that big of crystals. Some pegmatites will have crystals that are upwards of eight to 10 or more feet long. They can be really, really large. But these are clearly, obviously, larger crystals than the previous granite samples that I showed you. So again, really, really coarse grains. This is a pegmatite. Okay, last three samples are again volcanic rocks. This one is called a scoria. A scoria is a glassy volcanic rock with lots and lots of holes in it. It has a fairly basalt-like composition, so it tends to be pretty dark. Uh, black colors are very common. Lots and lots of holes. The holes, the bubbles, uh, are where there was escaping gas in the sample. And uh, after that gas escaped, it left behind these, these holes in this rock. The next one is very similar. This is pumice. Pumice is, again, a volcanic rock, and it's also a very glassy volcanic rock. And it also, like the scoria, has lots of large holes in it. And those holes, again, were caused by gas bubbles escaping from the magma as it was cooling. It's a very light rock, very, very low density. Our last volcanic rock is obsidian. And obsidian, again, is glass, but this time there are no bubbles in this. Uh, it's very, very uh, reflective. It has a conchoidal fracture. And other than being black, it has a very, very glassy appearance to it. You can see the conchoidal fracture in this sample quite well. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to the igneous rocks for this lab. Hope that was helpful to you and you can learn to identify them based on their textures and the minerals that are present in the rock.